Number 46. Suppose a 0.25 kilogram ball is thrown at 15 meters per second to a motionless person standing on ice who catches it with an outstretched arm. Letter A. Calculate the final linear velocity of the person given his mass is 70 kilograms. All right. So uh, here's the person. Here, each of these segments represent their outstretched arms. Here's the center of that person's mass. Uh, here's the ball that's thrown. It's 0.25 kilograms. It's traveling at 15 meters per second. And he's going to catch it with an outstretched arm. All right. And uh, we're asked to find the final linear velocity. So we have to think about, you know, we know initial conditions. All right. Um, we know he's initially at rest. We also know the velocity of the ball is initially 15 meters per second. And somehow we got to find out final values. That is the key word, or that's the key idea to think about conservation principles, right? Um, now, the conservation principle that is important for part A, since it's linear, would be the conservation of linear momentum. So PI is equal to PF, okay? Now, that being the case, um, we can expand on each of these, right? The momentum initially, there's two objects, okay? There's a ball and the person. The person's motionless, so we know that their initial momentum is zero, right? Um, but the ball does have some momentum because it's, remember, momentum is equal to mv, mass times velocity. So the initial momentum is simply just the momentum of the uh, ball here, which is the mass of the ball, right, multiplied by the velocity of that ball. And that will then be equal to the final momentum. Now, this is basically an inelastic collision up here. So, you know, once the ball uh, makes contact with his hand. Notice how the ball is being held in his hand. So it's an elastic, it's an inelastic collision. So that means that the final linear momentum will be equal to the combined masses of the person plus the ball. Okay. Oops. Plus the ball multiplied by the final velocity of the entire system. This is what we're after. Solve for it. So this is going to be MB VB all over M. M A plus M B. And now all we have to do is plug in, right? So this is going to be the mass of the ball is 0.25. Velocity is going to be 15 and divided then by the uh, mass of the of the person, which was 70 kilograms plus then 0.25. Oops, that's the times. Plus then 0.25 for the ball. And then just calculate. So there's going to be 0.25 times 15 divided by now 70 plus 0.25. And we get a value of about, so VF is equal to 0, 0 0.0534 or so. Okay, 0.5534. And that's meters per second. Okay, um, should be, you know, I mean, if you want to consider the signs here, you got a negative 15. So this should also be negative, um, but don't, you know, it's just the way I can uh, conceptualize the problem with the, well, eh, I'm basing it off of the picture, so maybe you should leave in the negative. All right, doesn't really matter though. Just know the, the magnitude is what's important here. So this is the value, okay? I'm just going to leave out the negative for now because once we start going into rotational stuff, it gets a little hairy. So that's the answer. Let's uh, minimize this. So resize. One second, guys. And this is for part A. All right. So now let's erase some of this. All right. And let's see what we got going on for part B. So part B. It says, now, what is his angular velocity if each arm is 5 kilograms? You may treat the ball as a point mass and treat the person's arms as, so I'm going to say point mass, the person's arms as uniform rods. Each has a length of 0.9 meters. So let me go back to the picture. So this length is going to be 0.9. The ball is out here. And this will be represented as a point mass. So we know we're dealing with the hoop. Okay, I didn't copy the picture in here, but you should know the formula by now. And, uh, you know, we got uniform rods, that the arms are acting as, as uniform rods over here. And they each weigh 5 kilograms. And the rest of his body is a uniform cylinder. So this circle here, I guess, will represent the uniform cylinder. And the radius of this uniform cylinder is going to be uh, 0 0.18 meters. Okay. And uh, great. And then the mass, and here's the thing. I'm just thinking about it. The mass of the cylinder, though, portion of the guy 
has to be 70 minus 5 times 2. Because he's got two arms, each of them are 5 kilograms, and they said that he weighs 70 kilograms in total. So this cylindrical portion uh, has to be equal to 60 kilograms, okay? Just keep that in mind. All right, wonderful. So now, neglect the effect of the ball on a center of mass. Okay, right. So the center of mass is still going to be located there. And, uh, okay, fine. So now uh, we have to find the... So in the prior problems, right, we've been covering a very, very similar concept here. We have to consider, you know, uh, what is essentially being held constant here. And, you know, we can think of this problem now as a as a conservation of angular momentum problem. So therefore, the initial angular momentum is equal to the final. Okay, The initial st stage is the point at just, if we go back up here to the top, just right, the infinitesimally small time period right before this ball actually makes contact with his hand or actually sticks to it. Or you can even say it's literally the point at which that happens. Okay, that's totally fine. That being the case, all right, we can kind of think about uh, the rotational motion that the ball will begin to experience okay so before or the initial will be just the um, angular momentum coming from the ball itself that's all so it's l of the ball and that must now be equal to the entire angular momentum of the entire system including the ball and the arms and the the torso okay so i'm just going to write that as l of the system so now expanding on this, we know that the angular momentum is equal to I, uh, I omega. So there's going to be the moment of inertia for the ball times the angular velocity of the ball should now be equal to the moment of inertia of the system multiplied by the angular velocity of the system. Now this is what we are after. It says, what is the angular velocity, right? What is the angular velocity, okay? That's essentially, they're asking for the final value here. So this is what they're after. Let's just solve for it. This is omega s is equal to ib, ib times omega b, all divided by is. Okay. So the moment of inertia of the ball before it told us to approximate as a point mass. So it, this gets treated as the hoop, right? The mr squared. Whereas now each arm... Okay, in the final case, in the systems case, each arm is considered a considered to be a thin rod about the about one end, right? The axis about one end, and then we here we have a cylinder with a point of rotation is right down the middle, so that's approximated by this, and then we have everything we we need, right? So let's now break this up a little more. So omega s is equal to i b times omega b. I'm going to write it like this now. Then it's the moment of inertia of the ball plus the moment of inertia of each arm. So I'm going to, they're symmetrical, so it's going to be two times the moment of inertia for each arm plus then the moment of inertia of his torso. Okay, that's the total system moment of inertia. And now from here, I can start substituting in my equations. I'm going to do it up here on the right. So now the final value is going to be the... Um, Moment of inertia for the ball. Now remember, that's just the mass of the ball multiplied by the radius, okay? Of, not of the ball, but you got to remember, this is treated as a point mass, so the radius at, from its point of rotation, okay, from the axis. So that's going to be the length of the arm, right? Essentially, it's the point nine, okay? Let's just leave this as the mass of the uh, ball times the radius of the ball squared. And that's then going to be multiplied by now the um, angular velocity of the ball. But they didn't tell that to us, right? They didn't tell us the angular velocity. But you have to remember this equation that the tangential velocity is equal to r omega. So solving for omega here, we get tangential velocity over the radius. They told us the tangential velocity. It's traveling at 15 meters per second. And you do know the radius at which the ball is rotating around. We just said it, 0.9. Okay, so you can substitute now this on in to your equation, and notice what will happen with one of the one of the uh, one of the radius here, right? One of the r's goes bye bye. All right, so that's the whole numerator, and now we can take care of the denominator. All right, so we got m b m b r b squared. That's just the same as what I just found up here, and then 
plus now two times my moment of inertia for the arm, which is approximated by this figure. So that's the mass of the arm. They told me it was five kilograms. The length of the arm was 0.9. That's squared all over um, three. Okay, close the parentheses. I'm going to try to move this over a little bit. If I can, I don't know if I can. Yes, I can. So I'm going to move it there. Let's see if I can just I'll move that too. All right. And then um, plus now the moment of inertia for the torso. And here's the formula for the torso. It's basically a cylinder about a central axis. So that's now going to be the 60. Oh, I started plugging in the values. I'm sorry, guys. Let me let me take out the values here. Um, this is going to be two times then the uh, mass of the arm multi multiplied by the length of the arm squared all over three. And then plus now this is going to be um, the mass of the torso multiplied by the radius of the torso squared all over all over two. And now we can plug everything in. All right. So there's now the mass of the ball. They told me was 0 0.25. The radius was um, 0 0.9. It's not squared anymore because I canceled it. The tangential velocity was 15. This all is now divided by uh, the mass of the ball, which is 0.25 times the radius, 0 0.9 squared, plus now two times, and here's the numbers now. The mass of the arm was five kilograms. The length was gonna be 0 0.9, all divided by three. Don't forget to square the 0 0.9. And then plus uh, the mass of the torso, which was 60 kilograms we found before, times in the radius of the torso, which they told us was, did they tell, yes, a cylindrical mass, sorry, a radius 0.18 meters, okay, uh, 0 0.18 squared, all then divided by two. And now we can finally calculate, all right? Oh man, isn't this fun? 0 0.25 times 0 0.9 times 15. Actually, you know what, let me do the denominator first. The calculation is gonna get a little crazy. So 60 times 0.18 squared, all divided by two. I'm gonna go backwards this time, plus then, uh, plus then two times uh, five times 0.9 squared, all divided by three. All right, and then plus 0.25 times 0.9 squared, and that's it. Okay, let me make sure I squared the 0.18. Hold on one second, guys. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, so I got about 3.87 for the denominator and then 0.25 times 0.9 times 15 divided by that denominator value. And I get about uh, 0 0.871. 871, and this is uh, radians per second, right? This is, let me just move this over a little bit. This will be in then radians per second. So there's that value, all right? So that takes care of part B. Let me move this on out of the way. Resize. Let's bring that on up there. So here's part B. And now, lo and behold, we'll deal with part C. Okay, just give me two seconds. All right, part C. Compare the initial and final total kinetic energies. Oh, I should never erase the moment of inertia. <laughs> um, okay, so the initial the initial kinetic energy is simply supplied by the ball. That's the only thing that's moving and it's linear. So this is one half mass of the ball times the velocity of the ball squared. This is easy. One half times the mass, which is 0.25 times the velocity of 15 squared. So the initial kinetic energy is going to be uh, 0 0.5 times 0 0.25 times 15 squared. And this is about 28.1, 28.1 um, joules. Joules, that takes care of the first part of part C. Let's get this out of the way. Resize. Oh no. Resize. Put that on up there. Okay, so there's the first part of part C. And then the second part is the final, okay, kinetic energy which is the object is rotating now, so we know that the, the final kinetic energy is basically the kinetic energy of rotation. We know the formula over there on the right-hand side is one-half moment of inertia times omega squared, and this is why I wish I didn't erase it because I had all the work. 
but I'm just going to write a, this is basically the total systems moment of inertia. And that's, we already calculated that as the denominator in the last part. Oh, I have it in my calculator. So kinetic energy, I'm not going to write it all out. All right, I wrote it out before. So this is one half, then multiplied. You should get that denominator value to be about 3.87. And then times the omega value as uh, the value we calculate in part B is going to be 0 0.871. Okay, and that's squared. So what do we have here for the rotating value, rotational value? It's going to be 0.5 times 3.87. It's really 8.8745. That's the exact. And then times then the 0.871 squared. What do we get? We get about 1.47 or so. 1.47. And that's in joules. And then it says compare the initial and total. I mean, I guess you can do a ratio if you want to take this, divide it by this, and that'll be how much more kinetic energy there was in, in terms of the uh, um, in terms of the linear case. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe. See you next time.